Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths, uh, a call for maths video, and it's the th third video on partial fractions where we deal with partial fractions uh, where we start with two distinct linear factors. As always, check out the YouTube channel, Twitter, Google Plus for more information. So, in this tutorial here, uh, it's part of the Edexcel course, uh, and it's actually the third video on uh, partial fractions. In our scheme of work here, uh, at last we're actually doing some rational functions and partial fractions, and we're going to deal with denominators with two um, distinct linear factors on the bottom. I'll show you what that means in a second. So, this is the rule which I'll just introduce to you. It's no other way of saying it other than the, giving you a rule. Rule one. An expression with two distinct linear factors on the denominator can always be split up into partial fractions as follows. So, if we have uh, this type of arrangement, here's a linear factor and here's a different one, that's what the word distinct means, we can always split it up as a number over the first linear factor plus a number over the second linear factor. For example, 7x subtract a over 2x minus 1, x minus 2, it actually turns out to be 3 over 2x minus 1, a number over the first factor, and another number over the second factor. One very important thing to notice here, this is only true, this is only the case, when the order of the top is smaller than the order of the bottom. You can see on the, the order means the highest x power. On top, at, at most, we have an x to the power of 1, and on the bottom, if we were to multiply it out, we've got a quadratic. So the bottom has a higher order than the top. This rule is only working in those scenarios. Okay, so let's use this rule to um, do some questions. So here's the first type of question that can come up. Express the following in partial fractions. You'd be expected to do this in the exam. Now just to check, the top is a linear expression, the bottom is quadratic, so we can use this rule here. And we can start off by saying that 7x subtract 1 all over x plus 1 x subtract 3, that is identical to, can be written as some number which we need to find over the first factor plus some other number which we need to find over the second factor. Okay, now if we were to make uh, this side have a common denominator, we would say that 7x subtract 1 over x plus 1 x subtract 3 would therefore be identical to a x subtract 3 plus b x plus 1 over x plus 1 x subtract 3. That's just combining. Okay? Now the denominators are identical to each other now, so this tells us that 7x subtract 1 must be identical to a x subtract 3 plus b x plus 1. Okay? The tops must be equal. Now this, you should be r reminded of, is what we were doing in the second video, the method of substitution. So let's try and solve this. What could we let x be here in order to find a and b? Well, we could let x equal 3. This side, therefore, will be 21 minus 1 is 20, would be identical to, if I put 3 in here, I get no a, so it would be disappear, plus, and I get 4b. And this would tell me that b must equal 5. What else could we let x be? We could let x equal negative 1. Negative 7 minus 1 would be negative 8, would therefore be identical to negative 1 subtract another 3, it would be negative 4a, and this would disappear. And this would tell us that a must be 2. So we found our a and our b. We should write down the page here, but I'm just going to write across because I've run out of space. Therefore, you should state your final answer that it, writing this as partial fractions is therefore, uh, you must say that 7x subtract 1 over x plus 1 x subtract 3 is therefore, can be written as 2 over x plus 1 and then plus 5 over x subtract 3. 
and that would be your final answer. One thing perhaps to point out uh, when we're in the exam, uh, we write down this as our initial statement. We know we're dealing with two distinct linear factors. The bottom's quadratic, the top's linear. We can use this rule. We probably don't need to write down this line here. Okay, we could probably jump straight away from here to here. We know that if we need to make the denominator x plus 1, x minus 3, a needs to be multiplied by x minus 3, b needs to be multiplied by x plus 1, and that, that must be equal to 7x subtract 1. So we can probably skip a line, which I'll do in the next example. So let's move on to the next one. You may want to try this yourself if you feel confident after the last video. Now, we want to express that in partial fractions. First thing to say is, the bottom's quadratic, the top's linear, so it looks of the right order. However, the bottom is not in two distinct linear factors. But perhaps we could factorise it so it could be so. So 2x plus 1, could we factorise the bottom? Well, actually, pretty easily we could. It would be x plus 2, x subtract 1. That's what would happen if we would factorise this. OK, so this is of the form we were expecting. We just needed to factorise the bottom. So sometimes you need to spot that. OK, so let's have a go at this question, therefore. So let's write down, we know this is linear on top, quadratic on bottom, two distinct linear factors on bottom. So we can use the partial fractions rule. We can say that 2x plus 1 over x plus 2, x subtract 1 must be identical to some number over the first factor, x plus 2, plus some other number over the second factor, x subtract 1. We know if we cross multiplied and equated, we could actually jump a line and say therefore that 2x plus 1 must be identical to a multiplied by x subtract 1 plus b multiplied by x plus 2. Now this is going back to our substitution method in video 2. I'll change pen for this. What could we let x be to try and find a and b? Well, if we let x equal 1, that would be a good choice, because this side would become 3, this would become 0, and this would become 3b. So therefore, b uh, must be equal to 1. This tells us that b is equal to 1. This sign here is just an implies. What else could we let x be? Well, we could let x equal negative 2. This, therefore, would actually turn out to be negative 3 is identical to uh, negative 3a. And again, a would be equal to 1. So make sure you actually write your answer in the end. This thing, which was our original question, question is therefore identical to 1 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x subtract 1. And we have our answer there. So we've expressed that in partial fractions. So that's all for this video. What I'd like you to do is do exercise 1b in the book. Do every question there. You now have the skills to solve this. And tune in for the next video. Thank you for watching.